the water we tested was from Oakford Lake in New Egypt. We used distilled water, which we compared to the lake water, to test dissolved oxygen and turbidity levels. For the first part of our experiment, we had to test the turbidity or clarity of the lake water compared to the distilled water, which we measured in JTU. For the second part of it, we had to test the amount of dissolved oxygen in the lake water, which we measured in ppm, or parts per million. Our hypothesis was that the lake water would be murky and it would have three parts per million dissolved oxygen. In the following videos, we will show our procedures and the materials that we use to conduct them. First, we tested for turbidity, which is the muddiness created by stirring up sediment or having foreign particles suspended. Turbidity can affect water life because the plants need oxygen from photosynthesis, and the mud is blocking the light so they can't get oxygen to survive. To test turbidity, we used two turbidity tubes, a stirring stick, and a standard turbidity regin. The left side is distilled water, and the one on the right is lake water. Hey, how you doing? You got you over here. Your system is great. Stir. Um, really easy job. You just have to bring four cups of water and order them uh, from best of water. We continued this procedure until the clarity in the lake water and the distilled water was the same. It took seven drops of the turbidity regin. Seven drops. Next, we tested for dissolved oxygen, which is the measure of gaseous oxygen dissolved in an aqueous solution. Is it important in lake water? Yes. This is because of the animals and the aquatic plant life that live here. They need oxygen. The first step I did was fill this tube with the lake water. Now I'm adding eight drops of this solution. Now I'll be adding 8 drops of alkaline potassium iodide. <laughs> Which did create some precipitate. Next, I will cap and mix. which makes the water very murky and you cannot see through it. Now I allow the precipitate to settle for five minutes. As you can see, as time is passing, the water is becoming clearer and the precipitate is settling. Now I will add 8 drops of sulfuric acid.
<laughs> and now a cap and mix. As you can see, the water is a pale yellow, or more like a bright yellow. Now I'll transfer the lake water from this tube to a bigger tube. What I did was fill the sodium thiosulfate into the titrator. Now I will add drop by drop until the water that is pale yellow turns clear. And then mix the solution. which is still pale yellow. So I continue to add more. Which still has a yellow tint. A little bit of yellow tint. Now clear. As you can see, the titrator is down to 5. Since in the beginning I filled it to 10, that means that there's 5 parts per million of dissolved oxygen within the lake water. This is a table showing how the amount of dissolved oxygen has an effect on species. We had five parts per million, which means it was sufficient for most species. It took us multiple times to conduct the experiment right. We found out that this was because the starch indicator we were using was out of date, so it wasn't showing us the right results. We found out that the lake water has five parts per million of dissolved oxygen. Our hypothesis was partially correct except for our estimation on the dissolved oxygen level. Although the water is not as clear as we would like it to be, the lake water is clean enough for the survival of aquatic animals and plants. <laughs>